Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Tuhami from Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Simplicity Show. And this year I invite Simple Living Advocates to show us the link and the connection between simplicity and passion and how simple living can enable passionate living, doing work that matters. And my very special guest today is Christian Grubmeier, author of the Zen Programmer. A great new book that will show you how you can have your life in your own hands and how to apply Zen right now not in a special vacation or in the weekends or this stuff no right now you can apply the Zen concept so if you feel stressed and have no time to do things that matter then this book is a must read uh, in this interview we will learn tips on how to say no more often and smile more often, live a better life, and do high-quality work. Christian, it's such an honor and pleasure to have you on the call today. Oh, the, thank you very much for your invitation. I'm very excited uh, to be able to speak with you today. So thank you. Thank you. So let's start with your story. I know that you have been working so many hours a week, like uh, more right. than like 80, 100 hours a week. And then you shifted your lifestyle into a Zen life. So uh, I'm excited to know your story. And what was the transformational point in your life? Well, actually, I worked a lot for quite a while in my life. So I started uh, as a young, young guy. I wanted to be a, a rock star. And for some reason, it didn't work out so well. So I needed to take a job. And well, then I started to work. And suddenly something goes wrong. And I needed another job. And... In the end, I ended up in um, becoming a, a programmer, and I mean, the programming scene is known uh, for the hard workers, actually, and uh, as I had no reputation back then, I thought it would be a good idea to, well, uh, to start with a big uh, company, and, well, I started with a big company and worked a lot. And then the next bigger company came out and I worked for them. And I worked and I worked and I worked and I drove up to Frankfurt, which is uh, around 400 kil kilometers far from my place. Uh, Monday morning, four o'clock or so, I worked myself uh, until um, Friday. I made 60 hours in the week uh, until Friday lunch, then traveled back, uh, slept the whole uh, Saturday and on Sunday, I, I felt like a zombie and uh, was packaging uh, uh, my, my stuff for the next week. And this went on for years. And on Sunday, um, it was so much stress and uh, so much hectic that I thought, so is, is that life? So should it finish like that? I mean, I was uh, waiting for the next promotion to a, another level to make some kind of career or something. And well, I worked and I worked and uh, I had money suddenly, but I have no time to, uh, to spend it on anything. So I gave everything to my wife. <laughs> At least she could have some benefit of it, but I was just working. And there was one day, um, it was a very hectic week. We had some bugs in uh, in uh, production, which means everybody was looking at what I am typing. And then I thought, okay, uh, I have my keyboard in front of me, and the one manager left of me, and the other manager right to me, and both were chatting in my ears. And everything went horrible, and I typed and typed, and all that. Like, Could you type faster, please? Could you type faster? But I couldn't type faster. Um, after all, I somehow managed to get the bug out and went home and slept for a few hours. Then I woke up, my adrenaline was pumping through my veins and I thought, okay, and now I even cannot sleep anymore. When I woke up, the, I, I could hear the managers chatting in my ears. So I thought, this is not, this is not right. This is no living. I finally just sat down on my ass and simply shut up. So I was doing that and I was breathing and I was uh, listening to the birds outside. And when I experienced that, I thought, okay, there is a life outside from work, from career and something. Uh, I just need to find 
a way to combine the birds outside my room and my own work life. And this was actually uh, the start uh, of my travel through Sun. Hmm. Awesome, that's great. So, so how would you define Zen? What is Zen? And how, how your book makes it so accessible to people? Like right now you can apply Zen, so... Well, actually, if you, uh, if you would Google uh, Zen, then you would find a lot of Buddhism and uh, people who explain Buddhism and Zen Buddhism related to Zen and so on. And uh, when I was um, so stressed back then, I didn't look for a new religion, actually. I just wanted to find a way out and give new uh, sense to my life. So um, there was a lot of Buddhism chatter and in all these between I found uh, one book from an author uh, who is called Kodo Savaki. Kodo Savaki was a Zen master who died before 50 years or so. So you could say he's a very modern Zen master. And he was known to be very straight. So he didn't say uh, Zen is a religion at all. He just said you can do Zen every time you live, in every second, with everything you do. Zen is everywhere. And I didn't understand it right, uh, right back. And uh, I think um, it's not understandable when I say it like that. So let me elaborate. I mean, Zen means uh, that you take your life seriously and you take your job seriously, but you're not attached to it. So, an example, if you go to your job and your manager comes and says, Hey, our system is exploding, you need to do something. Uh, yes, good, do something at all. That's all. But it's not, your life will not end because the system is exploding. Some people will lose money, okay. But you can't do more than work. And understanding that uh, the things you do is everything you can do and nothing more. And not being emotionally attached to such things is more or less uh, Zen. It's uh, knowing that you live, that you breath, that you're human, and that you need to put your feet on the bottom. There are more things than just work, and this knowing that you are a human, this recognizing and remembering you as a human, for me that's Zen. In terms of the book, uh, when you ask me um, why can you uh, do Zen right now, an example in this minute, in this minute I am practicing Zen with carefully listening to you and trying to pronounce everything as good as possible and express everything as good as possible. I could have my uh, mobile phone on and look at Twitter at the same time, but this is, um, this is not concentrating. At the moment, we are speaking and the sun practice would be to concentrate on what you say and what you are asking and I try to fully respond to that. This is my practice right now. There is no other confusion around. There is no music. There is no iPhone. There is nothing. There is just you and me. And actually, uh, to concentrate on what you say took me a long, long time. So you know it uh, when you are in the office, working maybe, your boss comes in, your wife calls in, then somebody sends a great link on Twitter and so on. Um, this is not concentration, but that means live now, breath now, act now, do the things right now, everything in here and now. That's Zen. So Zen is, is kind of living in the moment, you know. Actually, yes, it is. So, um, you, of course, uh, when you look into Zen and uh, understand what Zen is with living in the moment, you can dig deeper. So, an example, I have uh, been observed by the Zen uh, thoughts and I am practicing Zen on a more serious level. Meanwhile, means I have a sensei who teach me on Zen and who teaches me also on Buddhism at all, so because I'm interested. But if you uh, don't want that, it's not necessary actually. 
and that's what is my book about. I want to uh, introduce them to people who are not looking for religion, uh, but who want to uh, learn about the philosophy behind, and who want to see what I did to find out, to get out the manager from my year. Yeah, you, you know, the, the concept of living in the moment is very popular, but the application of the concept is really difficult because the, the, the level of distractions and the level of the, 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 the speed of today's life is, is not allowing people to live in the moment easily. So what are some kind of practices or like exercises or things that people can do in order to be more able to practice them. I, I know that in your book you wrote about Kaizen and other practices. So yeah. uh, can you share with us a couple of things that people can start doing and this automatically will lead to living in the moment or being in, in a Zen you know, situation or status? Mm. Yes, of course. So actually, uh, my personal uh, Zen practice, which I do every day, is to blow the Shakuhachi which is uh, a flute, a bamboo flute. But of course, uh, you cannot do that in uh, the office, because if I would arrive in the office with my bamboo flute, everybody uh, would think, so, oh, what is that crazy guy? <laughs> uh, so I thought about it, what could I do um, to make it in the office? And actually, sun practice is about concentration and about doing almost simple things with great care, or let's say, yeah, almost simple things. Um, a few of these things are art, like painting or something, or making music. But a few other things are, in example, making tea. And I uh, looked at these, uh, that tea approach and thought, okay, um, I'm a coffee drinker, but what if I would uh, go out in the middle of the hectic an example, shortly after lunch or uh, after a meeting or something, go to the coffee bar, take out very good tea and prepare to make tea. Nothing else. Just take out the tree leaves, make uh, the, hot, uh, the, the water hot, uh, prepare your cup, uh, try to make the perfect tea. It's a really perfect tea. It's the best tea you have made in your life makes it it that very day right after the meeting fully concentrate on making tea for around 10 minutes after making tea um, clean your dish uh, clean up everything you have taken and then you can go back do that once a day an example for 10 or 15 minutes and it will change you already because uh, if you, if you do have the hectic for 10 hours in one row or something, uh, you cannot find out. You, you, you lose uh, the contact to you, you have behind you. So, but if you, if you make a break, if you fully concentrate on the T, then you might be able to find back, uh, to, to get your feet back on earth, so to say. Just to not forget that you need to breath. Um, making tea is one of my my favorite um, things to find back to earth. Wow, that's a very interesting thing. I like that. It's it's uh, similar to the slow food movement. Have you heard about yes. that? Yes, I have heard about that. Uh, actually, I'm not very much into slow food movement, um, mm -hmm. uh, but well, uh, what I have heard from it is very good. Actually, I started to cook a concentrated cooking uh, recently before I think two or three months my wife is very thankful <laughs> and uh, it's actually the same if you prepare your meal you can practice sand as well so just as what I do is I do not use electricity electricity uh, when I cook a meal an example I prepare every carrot myself with a knife or um, everything I, I do everything myself and fully concentrated and I try not to be confused by any Twitter stream or anything else so it's just me and the tomato and um, so it's it's the same approach um, there are there are more things you can do in that vein that's why I say uh, you can practice sand at every time do something fully concentrated an example send monks um, sit down 
they just sit down and uh, they let their uh, thoughts stream through the mind. They are not attached to it. So it's the same thing. They do just sitting, and just sitting is um, really, really um, difficult. So for beginners like me, or maybe like somebody who listens to the stream now, um, it would be more like I need something to do because I'm not able to just sit because it's so complicated to just sit. Now, uh, make tea. Just make it and really try to be fully concentrated on everything you do, on every move, on every breath. And this is already very difficult uh, and you have something to concentrate on. You have something to focus on and it is still difficult. Mm. And uh, in the end of, of your book you, you talk about two interesting concepts. Uh, the first is Zen is hard work. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you really think this is an encouraging message at the end of the book? And how is Zen is, is hard work? And, and you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I know some people uh, don't like the word hard work. <laughs> um, well, but I, I can't lie to you actually. So because I would say, if I would say, um, practice a little Zen, and after two weeks you can fly, then it's a lie. And uh, it's not, because uh, yeah, until I reached the state that I really thought, okay, life has, uh, life has changed since I practiced Zen. It, it took me quite a while. I mean, I started with Zen around 2006 or so, and uh, really a change of my life was in 2010. So it took me f uh, four years of practice and studying to actually feel a change. And... Uh, since then, I quit my job, I uh, made intense practice of uh, Shakurachi meanwhile, and so on. I still feel it changes, everything changes, my, my thinking changes. But imagine, uh, can you change your own mind, your own thinking, so easily? I bet not, nobody can. And that's why I say it's hard work. Because uh, you, you cannot just sit down and say, oh, okay, and a little sleep in between, because it's not the practice. You need to practice to get a different view on your life, on yourself, on everything around you. And this is hard work. You cannot achieve that easily. And you know what? We are doing hard work anyway. But the difference yeah. is that the hard work we do now is not as fulfilling. and It's, it's not paying off as we want but when you do hard work on on the zen concept it will pay off and it will bring you the fulfillment that you are looking for so since you are working hard anyway so work hard on something that will pay off well some some zen masters would say uh if you do the zen practice just that it pays off it will never pay off you need to be very, or I need to be very careful if you're saying something like that, because um, the Sun Masters uh, would, would say I'm a totally idiot <laughs> if I would recommend something like that. You should not do it because it pays off. You should do it because it feels right to you, and you need to do it. Because um, I felt it's, uh, it changes my life, but can I say it pays off? I mean, I do not have more money. Actually, I do have less money. Uh, do I have more time because I work less? No. I work really much these days because I'm meanwhile self-employed. So I have a lot of things to do. So I have less money and I have the same amount of work. Does it pays off? Yes. Because I changed my life in a way uh, that I thought, okay, I don't care anymore about career. Career for me, pff, it, it doesn't mean anything. But uh, when I work, sometimes the door behind me opens and my two years old comes in the room and says, Hello, Daddy. And so I, I took him on my, on my feet and he can watch the meeting I'm currently listening and so on. So does it pay off? Yes, because I can smile more often because I have uh, lost the fright uh, before saying, okay, my career is everything. This life, I mean, you need a house, you need a dog, you need a career. It doesn't mean much. I need just the life now. Uh, this understanding has somehow paid off. So, 
it's natural it's natural to think uh, that your son is uh, priority no number one right I mean it's also natural in theory but in practice we see career we see the manager approaching us and hunting us down before a buck because of a buck so um, we all behave unnatural Sun helps you to get back into your natural mood so you cannot say Sun pays off in a way because it it would pay off if we would live in a natural way somehow so I would say Sun just helps you to keep your feet on the earth yeah that's makes amazing sense. yeah makes sense makes sense mm -hmm. and uh, the final thing that I would like to uh, discuss with you in this interview is dealing with other people because being a Zen practitioner in a world that does not understand <laughs> being calm and living in the moment because everyone is rushing around so mm. how do you deal with other people around you who don't understand this concept well that's actually difficult so I have um, made a very radical step so I have quit my job and then decided for myself to just surround myself with people uh, whom I like. Of course, not everybody of the people whom I like understand what I do and how I want to live. And Well, I could explain, but it doesn't matter. Because uh, if they want, don't want to understand, uh, they don't want it. So it's more or less, um, I try to live to not go onto your nerves. If I manage that, I have already achieved my goal. Then in the second step, I try to achieve that if you do something uh, which I don't like, I need to say, okay, it's something he did, and maybe it's my harm, but does my life depend on it? No. I simply need to accept that you are a kind, uh, a person of that kind, and well, then I can decide to go away I can also decide to be sad a little bit, but what I should not do is to uh, stick with the feeling. So there are a lot of feelings which come up during the day with people who don't understand what I do or what I want to live. So I need simply to accept that. I can be sad, okay, but sadness will go on. I can be happy because somebody understands me or makes a nice interview with me. Okay, but the happiness will pass on as well. So, uh, when I live in the moment, and when I, when I am the rock in the middle of a sea, and everything is silent around me, then there can be a storm someday, but in the end, the sea will stay silent again. Of course, this is not easy, and I have a lot of um, situations every week where I think, okay, where is my sand when I need it? because uh, I'm human as well. If I would not be human, and if I would not make my mistakes, you, would, uh, you could call me Buddha. But honestly, I'm far from being a Buddha, and I'm even far from being a great Zen teacher or something. So what I'm telling is just my own experience. And, well, dealing with other people, well, it's difficult, and it will stay difficult. It's just important that you try to not to stick to your feelings. So, accept you have feelings, accept you're human, human, then go on. Life will go on all the time. Awesome. Awesome. And what would be the final piece of wisdom that you would like to leave our viewers with? <laughs> there, is, uh, there is one of my favorite quotes I would like to share. I hope I can translate it to a proper English. It's um, it's very harsh, so uh, please uh, skip away <laughs> if you don't want to hear harsh words. But it's uh, to eat, to shit, and to piss. The fools will laugh, but the wise will understand. And that is what I would like to share because um, it's very interesting. Because this Zen master. Uh, have really seen what's important in your life so maybe you can go with that up <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice uh, a nice piece of wisdom to ponder upon uh, yeah yeah <laughs>
<laughs> makes well. sense. It makes sense. Need just to digest it a little bit until you uh, get around it. Thank you so much, Christian, for uh, the amazing insights that you shared with us in this call. And hope to have you again in a future episode where we talk in depth about the Zen practice. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much for your interest and thank you very much that I could explain a little bit uh, of Zen to you and I hope for your listeners that they enjoyed as well. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I recommend uh, those who are watching us now to go to zenprogrammer.org, right? Right. Zenprogrammer.org to check the book and your work. Uh, great book. Highly recommended. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.